Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church as Wednesday Night Live continues. Evangelistic is in Port Wyoming, California and is under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Dimmons. The experience at Evangelistic continues tonight with Bible study. If you need an outline for tonight's class, please send an email to Bible study at evangelisticmpc.com. That's Bible study at evangelisticmpc.com for an outline for tonight's class. This course series is called The Precious and Powerful Parables of Jesus Christ. Keep it simple. Now our pastor and teacher, Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Dimmons. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118 verse 24. David was going through something and many of like many of us are going through different things, brothers and sisters, and he writes this song, this um, composes this song, and he thinks about the goodness of the Lord, and he thinks how the fact that God has made this day, and that God has made this day, he owns today. So you might as well rejoice. Because the one who made you, the one who loves you, the one who sits up high and looks down low, the one who cares for you and died for you and rose for you, he made this day that you're living in. And he will bless you in this day. So you might as well just practice on your rejoicing and be glad in it. God bless you on this Bible study night, this Wednesday Bible study night, brothers and sisters. I'm the Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Nibbins, and I'm the senior pastor of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church located at 125 East Pearl Street in Port Running Me, California, 93041. I am so glad to be a part of your lives tonight and that you have taken time to tune in to this session, brothers and sisters. We are in the series from the beginning of the year, and we're going to be in it for a good remainder of the year, the powerful and precious parables of Jesus Christ, the powerful and precious parables of Jesus Christ. Christ. And we have a little subtopic of just keeping it simple. If you just get into God's word and study these parables and study what all the Lord has for us brothers and sisters, that's keeping it simple but smart. That is doing what you need to do to be able to succeed and be successful in this life. Look, I'm not going to hold you um, um, too long before we get into this Bible study lesson because we got a lot of meat to chew on. We might not finish this parable, um, uh, parable five tonight, all of it. And so if we don't, we just continue with it next week. It's all good. We're not in a rush, beloved. It's all good. It's all to the gravy. But one thing that we know that's very important, it's very important to connect with each other in prayer, knowing that God is still a God of answering prayers. And so we want to encourage you that whatever you're going through, you're not alone. Let's continue to pray for you. Pray for one another. You pray for us. You continue to pray for yourself. Uh, it's very important to lean on God and trust in him. Believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you believe that? Do you believe in the power of prayer? Do you believe that God is still answering prayers? Do you believe that God cares about you? Then come on, let's go. You can write in the um, prayer box, which is also the comment box, whatever your special needs are or your special requests or whatever, whatever it is. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel alone. You feel comfortable enough with putting in there. Uh, the I Got You crew is standing by, ready to pray for you, to see for you, encourage you. And so it's very important that you realize, brothers and sisters, that God is making a way. He's making a way and he's covering and touching each and every one of us. And thank God for that. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we just love you. We thank you for your time. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for sacrificing yourself on Golgotha's hill on that, on that cross on the tree. We thank you, God, for being so good to us, better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we're grateful unto you. So, God, we ask you to continue to have your way. Have your way, Yeshua. Have your way, King. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Messiah. Have your way, our love, God. I'm just our God of love, our God of comfort, our God 
of benevolence, our God of safety, our God of provision. We just thank you. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name. As we continue to go forward, there are people who are hurting, people who are struggling, God. We put them in your hands. Whatever we're going through, they're going through, put it in your hands. We ask you to have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. And God, we ask you that you continue to open up our understanding and, and our intellect and continue to fill us up with more of your Holy Spirit, God, and with your word. What we're going to get in here tonight, Lord, let it be plain and simple that a baby can understand. And so, God, we just praise your holy name. I submit myself unto you as the instructor of this course, the powerful and precious parables of Jesus of Yeshua. Hallelujah. So we ask you to have your way. Thank you. Thank you. Make a way. Make a way. Make a way. Heal. Deliver. Touch. Continue to restore. Hallelujah. Cleanse. Cleanse us. Cleanse us from unrighteousness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God. We love you, we praise you. In your sure in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's get to it. God bless you. Let's get to it. Brothers and sisters, parable number five. The parable of the weeds or the parable of the wheat and tares. The parable of the weeds or the parable of the um, uh, wheat and tares. We are in the passage of Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 30. And then also, brothers and sisters, I believe you see this in um, um, Mark. Uh, let me make sure that I'm not getting mixed up here. Yeah, you see that also in Mark chapter, thir chapter 4, verse 13 through 20. And then in Luke chapter 8. Verse 11 through 15. Hallelujah. All right. The parable of the weeds or of wheat and tares. Matthew chapter 13. Uh, we're going to read the scriptures, but we're going to get into this right now, brothers and sisters. And before we go any further, we want to thank you for partnering up all those who have partnered up with evangelistic and your giving. Uh, your contributions. We thank God for you. The information is provided. Um, if the Holy Spirit is leading you to continue to give to this ministry of those who are um, decided to give uh, for the first time. We thank God for you. And we don't take it lightly nor for granted that you have blessed us. You are blessing uh, financially. You are blessing um, with your support. We thank you for clicking like and love. We thank you for sharing our Bible study sessions. We thank you for holding your watch parties and just being a part of this ministry. We praise God for you. And we appreciate you taking out from your personal time throughout the week to tune in to us and to encourage us and pray for us and, and pour into this, so into this ministry. Thank you. Thank you. May God continue to pour into you mightily and uh, allow your bars to be filled and allow your life to experience just the overflow of God's goodness. Hallelujah. 30, 60, 100. So we just thank God um, for you and praise God for your um, connection with this ministry. All right. And we also have our service times available for you, brothers and sisters, that's provided for you. So Wednesday, um, Sunday, um, we just we, we have different things going on and the church has never stopped. The church, the building may have closed, but the church has never stopped. And we thank God for that. All right. If you're just tuning in and it's right there, it's showing you right there. Parable number five, the parable of the weeds or wheat and tares. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 30. Who's the audience? This is the same audience from the sower. The same people. It's like the Lord is giving a plethora of parables. It's like he, he he's in a parable zone right now. And he goes from the parable of the sower um, right before this. And now he goes into this certain parable. So the same crowd that's watching him by um, the riverside uh, while he's in the boat, he's standing and he's He's giving this parable. They're staying right there. They're mesmerized. They're tuned in. They're, 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 they're zoomed in to him and um, they want to hear more. And he gives them more. And so he's giving us more. So that same crowd, that multicultural mixed in with Jews and, and um, those who are um, Jewish and um, another culture 
um, another race of people. They are all standing in this large crowd listening to the Lord. Let me tell somebody right now, those who are watching me, who are starting ministries, those who are part of ministries, those who are over ministries, those who are ministries. Look, let me tell you right now, if you stick to the truth of God's word, if you stick to what God has given us to preach and to teach and to break that down and take it seriously, you ain't got to be a theologian, but you need to be a teacher of it. You need to be a teacher of it. I, 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 I believe something and I'll stick to it. Um, not all teachers um, can preach, but every preacher should be able to teach. So it's very important. It's from what the Lord is showing us with these parables. Preaching is awesome. I, anybody know I love some good preaching? I will sit there all day and hear some good preaching. But the teaching of the preaching is what resonates and take root when they leave. So they won't leave on emotional high, but they will leave on a spiritual for spiritual nourishing, nourishment in their lives. So it's very important. So that's why that large crowd is staying because they're being fed, not emotionally, but they're being fed spiritually and educationally. They're being fed. They're under, he's breaking down where they can understand. All right. He's not trying to sound like some um, know it all. He's breaking it down because he wants that audience to understand. What he's talking about before he leaves so that's very important leaves so i pray that you understand exactly what i'm talking about um people try to be all look do what god is calling you to do all right so you study god's word and take it seriously i'm telling you i'm telling you your ministries will take off they will take off and i'm praying for you and i want to encourage you because it's not easy it's not easy pastor it's not easy bishop it's not easy but god tells us it's necessary and it is very important so take take it seriously all right so um the audience large crowd same crowd from the parable so the context is jesus teaching by a lake uh, and i said river. he's teaching by the lake okay the key verse is coming is coming from um verses 29 and 30 of matthew chapter 13 verses 29 and 30 of matthew chapter 13 um no he answered because while you are pulling the weeds you may uproot the wheat with them um, and this NIV let both grow together until the harvest at that time I will tell the harvesters first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn once again that's Matthew chapter 13 verse 29 and 30 that those are the two key verses in this parable continue to read those verses that's the meat of it it's going to let you know exactly what's the meaning of this parable now we're going to get into the voice the voices we're going to get into the voices and what i always tell you um, the grammatical structure of the scriptures are very important because we un we want to understand this letter this is like a letter to us we call it the bible but it's like a spiritual holy letter from god that is recorded and written through men that are inspired by the Holy Spirit, and it's a letter. So these words, they have meaning behind them. They they, they have an intent. They have a different sound. They have a, a different uh, mood to them. And so it's very important that we understand um, the sound, the intent, the 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 mode, a, 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 the mood to them. It's very important that because that's the voice. The voices of these scriptures is through grammatical structure. All right. So I don't want to confuse anyone who's watching me for the first time. Don't think that it's going to be hard, but we're going to go back a little, little bit into English class and understand this letter that God has sent us called the Bible. So look at verse 24 in verse 24. And let me say this before I move on. A lot of people are watching me. They have the outline, especially if they're members of the church. They have the outline and you too can have the outline. Just send us your information and the information is provided you can send your information your email and we provide for you the outline the student outline you're gonna have to do some work um you're gonna have to put in different things um when i tell you to put in and it's very important that you um stay attentive and, and focus and if you don't have that right now get ready to write get down your get your notebook get your um pencils out pen whatever is comfortable to you Get ready to write. You are a disciple, which means that you are a student of the gospel. You're not just a looky-loo. You're not just watching me on social media. 
You are a student of the gospel. We are students. And anytime we have a chance to learn, that's what we do. We desire to learn and be students of the gospel. All right. That's just the way we do it. All right. So verse 24, verse 24. And I'm reading from the King James Version because in order to break down the grammatical structure, you have to come really from the King James Version. Um, and, you know, that's how a lot of interpretations um, come through the King James because King James is easy to break down grammatically. OK. Verse 24 and uh, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like likened unto a man which sold good seed in his field. I'm going to read that again. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sold good seed. See, what is the verb, um, voice? Now, number one, the number one voice that we see here is in the section where it says, it's likened unto a man. It's likened unto a man. When the Lord is speaking to him, he says, likened unto him, to a man. That's in the AOP. Okay, what is the AOP? The Aorist Passive. The Aorist Passive. AOP, uh, we put it for short, AOP. But it's the Aorist Passive. What does the Aorist Passive mean? The Aorist Passive is, undef is, is used for simple, undefined action. It is used for simple, undefined action, which also the passive voice represents the subject as receiving the action of the verb. I'm going to read that again. Those who have the paper, you're reading it and um, um, you're able to see it. But I want to make sure I read that again, say that again. So those who don't have paper can, can hear it um, clearly. It's likened unto a man, AOP for short. Aorist passive. The aorist passage is used for simple undefined action. Simple undefined action. And the passive voice within that represents the subject as receiving the action of the verb. So let's break that part, that section down, that part right there. It's like it unto a man. It's like it unto a man. So when we add in there the aorist passage, which number one is simple undefined action. So the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man. I'm about to give you a picture of what the kingdom is by forming a kingdom into the story, simply forming a kingdom into the story of a man. Just make this, I'm gonna make the kingdom a simple story of a certain man, all right? But keep in mind the undefined action. Keep in mind that. We understand the simple action, the kingdom of God, I'm about to simply put into the form of the story of a certain man. OK. So you got that. Represent, represents the subject as receiving the action of the verb. The action of the verb. So what's coming next is going to receive from what this man that represents, that simply represents the kingdom. What comes after him is going to receive from him. What is this going to receive? We sow good seed in his field. We sow good seed in his field. That's in the AP, APT. What's the APT? The Aries participle. The Aries participle. And the Aries participle expresses simple action. So in the beginning, we see simple undefined action. In the end here, as the seeds are being um, sold, is just simply simple action. Let's break this down to get a good understanding of what the Lord is saying in verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is simply simply in, in 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 theory or understanding i'm going to put the kingdom of god in the form of a man which simply sowed good seeds in his field now the reason why the seed is called good seed is because the seed takes on the character 
of the man that's sowing it into the field. The seed is not good by itself. The seed is good because where it is coming from. So the Lord is saying the kingdom of heaven is like this good, this, this, this man that sowed good seed. And the reason why the seed is good is because the man is good. So brothers and sisters, in order for the field to be right, the seed has to be right. But in order for the seed to be right, the sower has to be right. My God. And the sower, the sower has a um, authority and a uh, uh, bigger responsibility. And when he sows that seed, he has to make sure that each and every seed that he sowed is good to prosper. So the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. And I've been saying this. And I don't know why the Holy Spirit has been having me say this for a minute now. You sowing your denomination ain't doing nothing. But you sowing the kingdom of God, the word of God is reaching beyond my Baptist roots, reach beyond somebody's cogent roots, Pentecostal roots, Protestant roots, uh, Methodist roots, AME roots, Catholic roots. It, it reaches beyond that because the seed is good because the seed is coming from God. Hallelujah. Let me read that again before we move on because I want to make sure that you have this. This is the voice. This is the intent. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying that the kingdom of heaven is simply like a man, a certain man that you're going to see what kind of man he is, because what he does next will show who he is. Which so good, not not just good seed, not not, not just seed. Jesus made a point by saying good seed, good seed, good seed in his field, good seed. The seed was good because of this man who is the kingdom of God, who is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to God. I want to say this before we move on. It's very important. What seeds are you sowing in your church? What seeds are you sowing in your ministry? What seeds are you sowing in your family, in your marriage, in your career, in your entrepreneurships? What seeds are you sowing in your mentality, your mental makeup? What seeds are you sowing into your body, your physical health, your well-being? What seeds are you sowing? Hallelujah. And be careful of what seeds that you are allowing other people to sow into. Because when it it finds its spot, it grows. And whatever is good or bad, it's going to grow. So what seeds are being sown into you? What seeds are you sowing elsewhere in other places? I hope you understand that verse 24, because that thing, Jesus comes straight out of the gate is powerful. The kingdom of heaven is simply like a, a man. This like a I'm, a, I'm about to take the kingdom of heaven and Put it in the form of a man. Lord, you're something else. Lord, you're something else. I'm about to take the kingdom of heaven and put it in the form of a man so you can understand what the kingdom of heaven is like. And the very seed that I'm sowing to you is good. Not because of it on being just a seed, but the seed is good because it's coming from a good place. It's coming from a good man. It's coming from a good woman. It's coming from a good ministry. It's coming from a good church. It's coming from a good place. Glory to God. I hope you understand that. If you understand that, say, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Because I don't want to, I don't want to move on if you don't have it. I, I need you to have this. That's how this parable starts. It starts with the kingdom of heaven being transformed into the likeness, into the form of a man. When we can understand and they can understand and the seed, the seed, the gospel, hallelujah, the seed 
Glory to God. The people is being uh, put into the position it needs to be, and it's good because of where it's coming from. So the field, the field is receiving the action of the verb. The field is receiving the action of the verb. Glory to God. The seed is um, receiving the action of the verb. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. The, re the field is receiving because of the seed. The seed is receiving because of the sword. The sower is receiving because where, what he represents. Glory to God. Receive, 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 receive. Pastor, receive, receive, receive. Sister, receive, receive, receive. Glory. You see how God is working? Your blessing just didn't pop up out of nowhere. Your blessing got to you because of what was received. And what that received. And what that received. It, and it became, became a chain event of blessings. Oh man, I'm just staying on verse 24, but I gotta I gotta move on. Verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and show and sowed tares among the wheat, went his way. Read that again. Small verse, but a heavy hitter. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. And went his way. The word slept here is in the AIE, the I, which is the articular infinitive with an N, articular infinitive with an N, which expresses the time at which something occurred. What are you saying? What is the Lord saying? The Lord is saying, His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. His enemies came and sowed tares um, and sowed tares among the wheat. The only reason why the enemy was able to come, okay, the only reason why the enemy was able able to come, is because the men did what they slept. And I know I know it sounds unfair, and I know it sounds um, hard. Pastor, what do you expect for them to do? They, they've they been sowing seed all day. They've been working hard all day. Um, they're human. They need sleep. What do you want me to do? I totally agree with you. Rest is in order. Rest is necessary, um, especially after labor is given. But look at what the Lord is saying. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. Remember, this parable is not dealing with the physical. It's dealing with the spiritual. Remember, the kingdom of God is the one that's sowing the seed. Those who are representing the kingdom of God. And so there's a supernatural um, responsibility there. There's a power there. And it understand we all have our sleepy moments. We all sleep on certain things. We all um, get weary in certain um, parts of our journey. But the Lord is saying, but while they slept, that's when the enemy came. And I just want to tell somebody that's watching me right now, you're trying to figure out how things went wrong, but maybe you need to come to grips that while you were in your sleepy season, while you um, were sleeping on different things that God actually required for you to pay more attention to, that's when the enemy came in. And you're human and you make mistakes and things happen. And I, 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 I can witness to that and, and I can um, relate to that. Um, that in my sleepy seasons that I was sleeping on certain things. That's when an enemy came in and messed things up. And then um, I had to realize what happened. We were sleeping on it. The enemy came in and planted seeds, planted 
his own sin. And that's what the Lord is saying here. You have to come to grips and understand the problem so you can properly deal with it. So the Lord says, but while men slept, his enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Expresses a time at which something occurs. The tares got there because of the enemy came in while they were sleeping. All right. Now, I want to encourage you. It happens. You were sleeping on it. Deal with it. Confront it. You are enjoying this enriching Bible study by Reverend Dr. Torrance K. Nimmons, pastor of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church, as he teaches Wednesday night Bible study. If you would like to partner with or support this ministry, please go to Evangelistic's website, www.evangelisticmbc.com, and click on the Donate button. Also, you can donate with the Cash App at dollar sign Evangelistic MBC. That is evangelisticmbc.com and click on the donate button or with the cash out at dollar sign evangelistic mbc. All donations are tax deductible. Now back to Dr. News. Let's move on. Here we go. Matthew chapter um, 13 verse 28. It says, he said unto them, um, he, um, he said unto them, an enemy hath done this. They, they came to him in the other verses and uh, the other um, um, assistants, the workers, the harvesters. They came in and they, and they and, um, different assistants, not the harvesters, but people um, who were monitoring the fields. And they realized, uh, and, and that's the beautiful thing, they had an eye. They had an eye for what was weak and terror. And they came and told him, hey, did, did you do this? Did, did you do this on purpose? The, the, the put these tears in there? And, and when we really get down into the bulk and studying of this text, you're going to understand what exactly that tear is in real life. What, what, what it is, what it does to a field and to crops. And his answer is, he said in verse 28, he said to them, an enemy have done this. Enemy have done this. I know what I represent. I know what I put down. The enemy um, have done this. The servant said unto him, the servant, would thou then that we go and gather them up? Would, would you have us to go and gather them up? You, you ain't just going to leave it there, are you? You, you? you did all this hard work. And, and while you were sleeping, sir, the enemy came in and jacked your crops up, man. Threw this stuff up in here that, that can be very detrimental to your crops. You want us to just go on and just pull it out, get it out? And this is after a certain time as growth started to develop. This ain't just overnight, but after growth started to develop, brothers and sisters, when, when the tear and the wheat have taken root itself, they did not just seed anymore. They have they have developed within that soil with the wheat. And the the servants say, Well, you want us to just pluck it up, man? You want to just pull it out? The part where it says, have done this, when he said the enemy have done this, have done this, is in the aorist tense, which is simple, undefined action. Let me stop right there. He said unto them, the enemy have done this. Simple, undefined action, aorist tense. He's saying the enemy did this without even thinking or having second thoughts about it. That's what the enemy does. The enemy does not have a conscience. The enemy does not have a care in the world about if you live or die. The enemy does not care about your family being taken care of and, and your, your, your life being um, taken care of. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to seek us like a warring liar, seeking us to devour us. The, the, the sower said, this is the work of the enemy. And he simply did this undefined action. He simply did this and and for me to even go further beyond why he did it is pointless doing dirt and evil stuff is in his 
nature. That's who he is. And that's what the sower is saying. He's saying, the one who loves to do stuff like this, he came and did this while I was sleeping. He came. And my brothers and sisters, it's very important. We as um, disciples of the Lord and those of us who are in the, in the um, household of faith, in, 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 the, in the kingdom of God, we have to understand we can't continue to be questioning the devil and asking him why he does what he do. He does it because, get this newsflash, he's the devil. He's the serpent. He's the old serpent. He, 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 he's the one that, that tricked and, and influenced Eve and influenced Eve, uh, Adam through Eve. He's the one that got us kicked out of the Garden of Eden. He's the one that got us kicked out of paradise because that's what he does. He's a snake. A snake is the same in your good season and a snake is the same in your bad season. All right. So he says, he just simply did this. There's no explaining. Undefined action. And then we see the part where it says, without then that we go. Stop right there. Go. That um, word go alone is in the aorist participle. Aorist participle. It expresses simple action. Now, get this. I, I, I love these servants. They said, we brought this to your attention. We observed, we, 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 we saw the difference. That's good. You are discerning. That's good, brother. That's good, sisters. You are discerning. You have grown in the Lord enough where you discern right from wrong, when you see the hand of the enemy and what God is doing also. So you bring it to attention. You bring it to a head. And then you have a simple reaction a, that's a part of your nature. Should we just do something about it? Should we now now hear what I just said? Should we just do something? We don't know the consequences of doing it, but we know that something needs to be done. Good and bad. We know something needs to be done, but we don't know the consequences if we do it. You have to understand the consequences. So it's simple action. Beautiful. They were ready to do something. But then you see also the last part here, gather them up. Simple action, gather them up. That's in the Aries um, subjunctive, um, the AOSB, and then the other one um, right before that was the AO Aries tense, simple, um, um, not the Aries, but the Aries participle, um, APT. So that first part, have done this. Aries tense, simple undefined action. Go, APT. Aries participle. Then the last part, gather them up. Aries subjective, AOSB. Aries subjective, which the Aries subjective is connected to the two. Um, it's connected to the Aries uh, participle, it's connected to the Aries tense, but it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. The Aries subjective is simple, undefined action, but it also makes an assertion about which there is doubt, some doubt and uncertainty and some uncertainty, so, um, and some, un, some um, indefiniteness. So it's very important to understand these servants. They saw the issue. They brought it up to the sower. The sower tells them the cause, the problem, who did it. It's part of their nature. That's what they do. But the sower isn't, um, he isn't frantic. The one who did all the work, and they're bringing the mess to him. He still got a, a coolness about himself for some reason. Think about that. Think about that. Remember earlier we said he represents something that's bigger than everything else. Okay. Come on, preacher. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Walk with me. They're frantic. They come out with a solution. We're not understanding the repercussions of the solution. Should we just go and gather them up? So should we just simply go and gather them up? And that last part, which talks about there's some doubt and uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen, dog. We, 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 we don't know what the end result is going to be, but we know that shouldn't be there. So you want to just go put it up and deal with the repercussions, the destruction that's going to be. 
Let me talk to you, church folks. I know God has blessed us with discernment. We see the problem. That's very important. But discernment does not stop at just seeing the problem. The, the discernment comes with godly solutions. Hallelujah. Y'all write this down. Discernment comes with godly solutions as well. We have to follow the discernment through. I know God showed you that they no good. But discernment says, pour good into them. Discernment is saying, now you should cut them. Now I got to cut you. No, no, no. Don't do the Delaware from Harlem Nights on them. Don't pull out the switch blade on somebody. No. Brothers and sisters, the Lord has given you, he's given you discernment to see the problem. Now you have to see the solution. Don't just see the problem, but see the solution. Glory to God. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Say, I got it. Say, I got it. The servant saw the problem. They brought it to his attention. They're looking at him like, why are you so cool? Should we just go pull this out, man? Because this ain't supposed to be here. This stuff is going to spread. This is going to mess up this entire field. All right? And they were about to act with uncertainty. Don't act with uncertainty. Be certain of what you need to do. They were acting in doubt. One of the most destruct, um, dest um, destructive things that we can do is to act in doubt. Act with uncertainty. We need to be certain. Glory to God. Other people may not be certain, but get this. It was that sower's responsibility to make sure that the people who were acting in doubt would not follow through with that act. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You're going to see what I'm saying. The reason why verse 28 is about the Hit you right in the face with verse 29. He's cool, they're not. They want to act, but I still like what they did. They did not act without seeking his approval and advice. I'm going to say this. The reason why a lot of ministries are not where they need to be is because you have too many people or people in prime positions acting without answers or without seeking answers, without seeking instructions, without seeking approval, without seeking direction. They went to the sword. They went to the one that had authority over that field. I'm going to do it like this. Remember, uh, we told you, or I, I told you earlier that receiving of the verb earlier, the field received from the seed, the seed re um, received from the sower, the sower received from where he came from, where he represents the kingdom of heaven. Glory to God. So brothers and sisters, those who are in ministries, you're receiving from, from somebody. Don't act without going to them what you're receiving from. Those who are receiving from somebody else that's able to lead others. I'm talking now to just the past. I'm talking to the pastors. We're not acting on our own. We're receiving from God. We're receiving from the one who has called us to this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. That's how we continue to be successful. We receive from one of them. We receive. Glory to God. We seek. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told y'all we wouldn't probably get done with all of this. We got too much. Even the voices in the, uh, alone um, gets us. We're going to finish with the voices and then we're going to get into the rest of, uh, rest of it next week, brothers and sisters. Matthew chapter 29. Uh, chapter 29. Chapter 13, verse 29. Chapter, chapter 13, verse 29. But he said, nay, lest while you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Thank God they looked to him first before they acted on their own desire. Thank God they asked him and sought him and you know, sought him out to get the answers. 
But he said, nay, at least while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. The wheat is still more important than the prophet, than the tear. Um, gather up the tares, that's in the present participle. Gather up the tares, that's in the present participle, which expresses continuous or repeated action. So he says, but, but he said, nay, while you are continuing to gather up the tares. There's a consequence with that. There, there's a there's a big consequence. Why you continue to gather this up, um, gather them up. You're causing um, what they call it. Um, friendly fire to somebody else. It's not that friendly, is it? Man. So express continue repeat action. Gather up the tares. Root up also the wheat with them. Root up also the wheat with them. And that's in the Eris subjective, um, the AOSB. And that is simple undefined action. Once again, brothers and sisters, which makes an assertion about which there is some doubt or uncertainty. So he throws it right back on. He says, look, I don't want you to do that because while you continue continuously gather up the tear, and there's a lot there. And that's what the enemy does. He, he bombards us with a bunch of mess. There's a lot there. You will root up also the wheat with them. You 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 will simply um, not knowingly root up the wheat. The good seeds that was planted first. And the reason why you will continue to hurt them is because you acted, because you acted in doubt and uncertainty. The enemy, he has his rope. He knows exactly what he's going to do. He's going to destroy. That's his role. For me to explain why he does it all the time is pointless. That's in his nature. But you, you care, you have a desire to make things right, but you're acting with the wrong um, strategy. You're acting with the wrong methods. You're, you're acting in haste. You're acting um, um, with doubt and uncertainty. And you're, you're not just going to pull up the weeds, but you're going to destroy the wheat as well. No, I don't want you to do that. So verse 30, verse 30 says, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Glory to God. Grow together until the harvest. Grow together until the harvest. That is in the present infinitive. The present infinitive is expresses continued or repeated action without implying anything about the time or um, time of action. So let both grow together until the harvest. Don't don't worry about the time. Don't worry about um anything else the place i need the wheat to continue to grow the wheat's gonna have to adapt in territory in tear territory i'm talking to somebody you've asked god why things have gone the way it has why did you grow up in that situation why did that person do that to you why have these things happened to you? Why are they happening? And just like this man who represents the kingdom of heaven, he's telling the servants, he's saying, leave them there. Let them go through their seasons together. Because one was put there to grow. The other one was put there to hinder and destroy 
but the one that was put there will grow um, to grow will continue to grow no matter what is around it you have grown in spite of your pain you have grown in spite of the attacks you have grown in spite of the lies and and those who turn their back on you you have grown in spite of the loss in your life of loved ones and and close um friends confidence in your life you have grown you have grown because there's certain things in your life that if god would have snatched it up out of your life you would not be who you are right now I just felt something mm. talking to myself. I know it hurts, beloved. We all can say, I wish this never happened. I wish, Lord. But it was sown in your, it was so in your sleepy season. Some of those things. Some of those things were so, some of the things put there, sabotaged you. But you still grew through it. Especially continuing or repeated action without implying anything about the time of action. We don't know how long it's going to take, but you can continue to grow. You don't know how long it's going to take to get that stuff out, but you're going to continue. You continue to grow. Here it goes. Here it goes. Uh, gather the weak into my barn. When it's all said and done, the Weeds are taken up and they're bundled together. The 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 the, the source says, "I want you to put all the weeds together." I mean, they're not even going to be destroyed one by one. They all will be taken care of together. Somebody, you know what I'm saying? God ain't just going to do a a, a a solo act in your life. He going to do a multiplication of tearing down stuff that came against you. He's going to seize control of it. He's going to tear down everything that tried to tear you down. He's going to put to the fire everything that tried to burn you up, try to destroy you and choke you out. Here you go. Uh, gather the wheat into my barn. That is in the aim. That is A-I-M. That's in the Eris imper in imperative. The Eris imperative. What does the Eris imperative mean? It means a command for doing something in the future. That is a simple action. So what did this uh, farmer say to them? He said, OK, I need you to understand it's going to take some time for them to come out of this, but they're going to come out of this because I know what kind of seed I sowed into that field. I know what kind of seed, what, what they have in them. And I also know what kind of seed the enemy sown. And I know how that grows and how long it takes and what it does. But the seed that I sowed is going to grow. It's going to grow and it's going to get strong. And it's going to be strong enough that it won't have to worry about the soil because now the roots will keep it going. Glory to God. Glory to God. And he says, but will gather the wheat into my born. So it's a command for doing something in the future. That is a simple action. He says into my barn, into the safe space, into refuge, into a place where it, it will be treated like a we it will be treated with the value that it is. It will be it will be in a place where it's supposed to be, where it belongs. But it has to go through a season of growing up with the terraces. It has to go through a season of dealing with the stuff around it. Yeah, it was not supposed to be there, but the enemy came to sabotage. That's what he does and so that's just a part of life we have a lot of uh, sabotages that's thrown our way but how do we deal with it we grow through it hallelujah we just don't sprout up and and and, and not realize that we don't have enough root down there to survive brothers and sisters we got to continue to grow through this thing and at the end of the day the very one who sold into us the very one who put us into that position in that place is going to take us back into a safe space take us with him into his barn where we belong and we will have to be able to get through the now to be blessed in the then hallelujah and hallelujah. the sweet by and by glory to god hallelujah the tears won't make it to the barn hear me beloved hear me hear me hear me the tears in your life 
the sabotagers, the evil one, the bad seeds. They won't make it to the barn. You will. Do you hear me? You will. Hang in there. Keep growing. Keep growing. Let me stop it. Let me stop it. Let me stop it. Let me stop it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we got some more next week. Some meat breathing into this parable. This parable is not long, but it's powerful. Just in the voices alone, we get so much. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you that if you have not given your life to Christ, that you do so right now. You don't play with this thing. You don't. You don't take time. There's no. There's. There's, there's no reason to take time away from um, being invited into eternity with God. You don't need time for that. You, you will run out of time here. And God's trying to give you eternal time with Him. So I would encourage you that if you have not done so, that you receive the Lord. Hear what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. He loves you. He sows into you. He sowed this life into you. He gave His very life, the Lord. His God, um, the Father, gave his son, God the Son. And I know some people say, that's that's hard to understand, Pastor. I don't understand that. But God has three characters. You got God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And God the Son, God in the flesh, came here to conquer your sins and my sins and our sins. So we can be reconciled back to God the Father, Him as the Father. It's almost like God put an undercover boss on us. <laughs> Some of y'all, if you watch Undercover Boss, you will understand exactly what I'm saying. God put on flesh, He dwelt among us, and He died for us in the flesh so we can overcome the flesh. Because of him. And so I want to encourage you. All those things. I ain't getting deep. I'm just going to tell you this. God loves you. There's a God in him who loves you. Give your life to him. Please. And if you have given your life to Christ. Um, you, you fall in. You, you did him. You're, 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 maybe you slept on something. And you made your fall. And now you're dealing with the tears. You're dealing with the weeds. You're still growing. Let God. Take you into his bar. He know what he's putting you. Maybe you just don't know it yet. But God knows. And just like the servants, uh, we all have a responsibility to see the problems and see the hurts of what people are going through. And we don't make rash decisions, but we pray and we want to encourage people to give their life to Christ. You see, hallelujah. Oh, man, I enjoyed y'all. Let me get up out of here. Once again, brothers and sisters, if God has touched your heart to sow into this ministry, we have the information provided. We just thank you for your um, charitable giving. We thank you for your commitment to blessing this ministry. And we appreciate you in everything that you do. If you can't give uh, uh, monetarily, brothers and sisters, you can give prayer, encouragement to your partner up with us, whatever it is. God has placed on your heart. We thank you. All right. Hallelujah. What a time, what a time. We're going to continue with the fifth parable here in this series of powerful and precious parables of Jesus Christ. Keeping it simple. We're in the fifth parable, the parable of the weeds or the parable of the wheat and tares. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 30. All right. We've got more for you. Let's do this. Hallelujah, Lord, we just thank you for everything you've done for us. We ask you, God, to touch and have your way. We ask you, God, that you continue to be lifted up in our lives and that you continue to show us what you have invested in us. And enemy, we understand what he has to offer, which is nothing compared to what you have to offer. And so, God, we ask you to open up our understanding, touch us, and strengthen us for our times of when we slept and the enemy came in, sabotaged us and so seized, that we continue to grow in you. Come out of this and go into that barn. So God, we just love you and praise you. In Jesus, Yeshua, thank God and amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Until we meet again, see you next week. Shalom, shalom, shalom.
You have been listening to Rev. Dr. Torrance K. Nivens, pastor of Evangelistic Missionary Baptist Church in Port Wainimi, California. If you would like to donate, partner with, or support Evangelistic, you can do so online. Go to www.evangelisticmbc.com and click on the yellow donate button. Also, you can use the cash app for donations at dollar sign Evangelistic MBC. All donations are tax deductible. Evangelistic live streams all this services. Catch Sunday School on Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. Pacific and 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Sunday morning worship services at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern. Hour of Power Prayer is at 5.30 Pacific and 8.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday evening. See you again next Wednesday for Bible study at 7 p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern.